Now, I'll intentionally keep it for, uh, short. Glenn had enthusiasm for life and everything he did. Uh, K-State in business, highly successful because of that enthusiasm and helping community activities and virtually anybody he touched, he had the enthusiasm to make it work for the other person and the other people obviously made it, made it work for him. And uh, uh, a couple brief stories on him that uh, about his junior year, my senior year, uh, he was my pledge son and also our, our fathers were, were uh, friends before Glenn and I had ever met. And then uh, Glenn and I did a lot of business over the years. We probably talked on the phone every couple of weeks or saw each other. But in any event, he had a bike, bicycle accident, messed up a knee rather severely, and thinking this is the worst thing that ever happened to him. I said, well, it may, may not be that bad. It might get you out of the Vietnam War. Said, Nothing good will come out of this. <laughs> well, uh, the, uh, a nurse's aide there, uh, Elaine, his, his wife, and <laughs> the, the second day that he was in the hospital, he said, I'm going to marry her. <laughs> and they did, and had a, had a, had a, had a wonderful marriage. <laughs> so he threw the enthusiasm that we saw, this was the person for him, he, with that same enthusiasm, he threw his heart into it. Uh, one time after a, uh, been a fair bit of drinking, and Glenn was going to head out and do something, he was, no, you know, go somewhere, and he was in no condition to drive. So I went out and deactivated the ignition on his car. Everybody was trying to talk about Glenn don't go, and so he went out and the car wouldn't start. And that night he was quite unhappy with me, and even a week later he was quite unhappy with me, but I'll bet every year since then he's thanked me for deactivating his car. <laughs> and so with the other point uh, was that sometimes there's a friend that uh, may be going down a wrong path or doing something, and if you're a true friend, you put your hand on his shoulder and say, hey, maybe take a little, little different uh, path. But um, I think everybody that knew Glenn was inspired by him. It, it, it is a huge loss, but if we can try to, to, to maintain, re remember the ideals that he lived by, the enthusiasm, and the focus on helping others, whether it be this house, many things in his community, the cattle industry, but a, a, an incredible idol for all of us. Thank you, Rich. And greetings, brothers and ladies. <laughs> um, it's been a tough week for all of us. and uh, Certainly those of us who, who knew Glenn well. And I thank uh, the good Lord that um, I was led back to serve on, on the fraternity board about 10 years ago, or I may not have had the chance to reconnect in a big way with Glenn, even though we did occasionally. He'd call me down Ashland. We lived kind of out in you know, God's country together. So, um, but I, the one word I would describe Glenn is that uh, he was a pillar. He was a pillar of a man. He cast a big shadow. But he was an unpretentious man. He was an unassuming man. And I, somebody, I was telling, uh, describing him the other day at the bank to somebody, and I said, you know, after a particular incident a couple years ago, I uh, let me tell you the incident. Sue and I were coming up. It was a board meeting Saturday. We were almost a great band. I went by Tawny Rock, and I called him to see if he was out of bed yet. He said, yeah. He said, hey, where are you? And I said, well, we're just pulling into great band. He said, stop at McDonald's, and I want to get in with you and just visit. And that's kind of the way Glenn was. He said, Sue can get in with Elaine and then we'll just caravan on up to Manhattan. And I thought, that works, that'll be good. And uh, <clears throat> we just got a, a, a late model used car, and Glenn hopped in and thought, boy, this is pretty, pretty nice. And, and uh, I saw the car that Sue got in, it was a 1998 Mercury Marquis or something like this. <laughs> My point is, Glenn didn't need all the glitter, didn't need to put on a show in life. I, I, I described, as I started to say, uh, to uh, him, him, to uh, somebody in the bank the other day, that he was kind of the Sam Walton kind of guy. A man that had accumulated a large amount of wealth in his life, but if, if you know the Sam Walton story that started Walmart, always drove an old beat-up pickup to work every day with his dog in it, you know. Didn't need to put on any airs, and that's just the way Glenn was. I encourage you guys you guys in the chapter too, when you leave this place, 
to stay plugged in. I wouldn't go do this. <laughs> stay plugged in to the guy sitting next to you. 10 years, 20 years, that gap, there's a gap going to be there because you're going to start your family and get out of life. But stay plugged in to your brothers. Stay plugged in to the chapter. And I'm just going to read the eulogy, the obituary, excuse me, um, because, and I will say, Brian, thank you for first for putting this all together and, and you guys and for you guys showing up. But there is a copy of the bit over here on the piano if you want to read it. And I I'll, I'll, may skip over part of this. But Glenn Allen Mull was from Pawnee Rock, passed away, as we know, on Monday in Bellevue, Tennessee. He was 62 years old. He left for heaven, and we don't want to forget to also memorialize today his lovely wife, Elaine, their daughter, Amy, and the granddaughter, Samantha. Born to Keith and Marion Mole in Great Bend, Kansas, Glenn was destined to make his mark on the cattle and farming industry. He spent his formative years working on his parents' farm, learning the values and integrity of the business instilled by his father. In the fall of 1969, Glenn began pursuing his higher education at Kansas State University in Manhattan. It is here where he would meet his future bride and partner in life, the story Rich just told you. Her name was Elaine Amarine of Great Bend. They married on the beautiful day of July 17, 1971. Following Glenn's graduation from the College of Business in 1973, he and Elaine began their lifelong adventure in the countryside of Pawnee County. It is here that his focus on growing a family farm three generations strong would give his wife and soon-to-be three children a rewarding life of nurturing the land he believed was bestowed to his care for the good of others. In the years following his return to Pawnee Rock, Glenn was a partner in business with his father, a loving husband, a caring father, a doting grandfather, and a generous, a generous philanthropist. In bold letters, generous philanthropist. My words. He was well respected in the Kansas farming community as owner of Mole Farms and Feeding Incorporated and several other agribusiness ventures. Deeply devoted to the work he loved, Glenn stayed active in the Kansas Livestock Association and the National Cattlemen Beef Association. Through these memberships and networks, he integrated the desire to promote the voice of the Kansas farmer into his life's work. Glenn was a pillar in the communities he served and a devoted member of the Grace Community Church of Great Bend. His desire to love and effect change stretched far beyond the property lines, lines of Mo Farms and poured into the surrounding towns. As a founding, founding board member of the Pawnee Valley Community Hospital Foundation, Glenn made it a priority to continually assist in the improvement of health care for the community of Larned. Valuing the friendships, and hear this part, valuing the friendships he gained at K-State with Delta Upsilon Fraternity, he has continued to serve on advisory boards through the years. There are few words that can sum up the measure of this man, a visionary and a selfless soul. His life on earth gives reason for all of us to believe that the heart of humanity is pure good. Gentlemen, we've lost a good friend and a brother. Thank you for coming. And I will give you greetings from his dad, Keith. I called him on the way up last night, and I explained to him first my, expressed my sympathy and condolences, and told him that you all, you, the chapter, had decided to put on this memorial service for Glenn. And I know he was deeply touched. So thank you. Thank you, Bill. As with all of our founding fathers before us, our time on this earth is brief. We are but visitors on a journey on this earth. The evergreen, which I hold, is an emblem with, of our own immortality. It reminds us that like our dear brother whose loss we mourn, we too shall soon be clothed by a death's wardrobe and laid away in the silent tomb. <coughs> Yet through a belief in a divine mercy, we may confidently hope that our spirits will bloom in the sunshine of an eternal spring.
Until we are again reunited in chapter eternal, may nothing but peaceful rest be upon our brother more. With all sincerity, and sincerity, we await with eagerness our next meeting of brotherhood together. We mourn the loss of his mortal body, but are comforted by the existence of his spirit that still resides in our fraternal circle, and by the shared memories that continue to fill our minds. Chaplain. Let us pray. Our God, our loving Creator, we beseech Thee to bless the solemn services in which we have been engaged. May our faith in Thy goodness and power be strengthened and ever abide with us. We ask for Thy blessing upon our beloved Delta Upsilon and each and every member of our brotherhood. Amen. This concludes our memorial service. Uh, Sincerely appreciate everybody coming here and uh, thank you very much for paying your respect to Brother Glenn Moore. Thank you. Thank you. Eternal soul.